Across South Asia, this golden fiber, called jute, has been used to weave clothes, mats, and bags for more than 2,000 years. By the 1900s, jute sacks were essential for the global trade of nearly all crops. And the region that would later become Bangladesh was one of the world's biggest producers. But synthetic materials replaced jute within a few decades of the industry's peak. Now, one scientist is trying to revive interest in this swamp plant by turning it into a biodegradable replacement for plastic. The government of Bangladesh invested roughly $2 million into his idea after becoming the first country in the world to ban single-use plastic bags, a law Mubarak Ahmad Khan was against. Because you don't have any suitable alternatives. 20 years after the ban, plastic trash in this country is still, well, everywhere. So can jute offer an alternative to a world drowning in plastic? And can Bangladesh once again become the world capital for this trade? Every day, more than 200 tons of jute is delivered to one of the largest mills in the country. Ahian Jute Mills is located about four hours southwest of the capital, Dhaka. Bangladesh exports nearly a billion dollars worth of jute each year. There's even a whole government ministry dedicated to it. This mill has five warehouses that are emptied and restocked within a week as the stuff is prepped for processing. Workers start by combing the reeds over spikes to soften the fibers. After, they throw the raw jute into a spreader machine. It separates the strands and forms them into large rolls that are placed back into the machine for more detangling. The wheels are transferred here and covered with cloth for about 48 hours. Then, pinned rollers soften them and remove any impurities. The other end spews out ribbon-like strands called slivers. To reduce their width and thickness, they then go through a process called drawing, which involves crimping the fibers to enhance their strength and flexibility until they're ready for spinning. These machines twist and lengthen the jute into spools. Yarn consists of one strand, while twine is made with two. The next step is winding. That's when any spinning errors are corrected to improve the yarn's performance. Some spools are used to weave rugs and bags. Workers crank out two to three million of these a month. Now, this mill employs about 3,000 people. But the demand for jute used to be much higher. 2018 was the mill's golden year. Every month, it was exporting 4,000 metric tons of jute. These days, it sells nearly half that amount. This region used to be part of Bengal in British India and has been harvesting and processing jute at a massive scale since the 1850s. The crop thrives in warm and humid environments, so it's no surprise jute grows well here. Jute basically was the plastic bag of the early 1900s, used to package and ship everything from sugar to corn to wool. During World War I, Europe imported over a billion jute sandbags to use in trench warfare. The industry peaked in 1970, with around 170,000 people working with the crop. The world's largest jute mill, the Adam G. Wax, near Dakar. Jute has always been an important product of this area, and today, this is a major industrial center. By then, the region was part of Pakistan, and many were unhappy with the government. The decline of jute started around the time of the Bangladesh Liberation War. Separatists fought for and won independence in 1971. But millions of people were displaced in the bloody war, and many jute mills were left ownerless. The newly formed country of Bangladesh took control of most mills, which, according to some critics, led to corruption and mismanagement. Around the same time, plastic was taking off in global markets. And as the months go by, jute is losing more and more ground to synthetic fibers. And in the 80s, many farmers abandoned jute for other cash crops. 
nearly half of the mills had closed by 1998. And by 2001, Jute's export earnings had dropped from 90% to under 5%. Today, the demand for jute remains low, as cotton and plastic fibers are relatively cheaper. But Muberg hopes to restore the crop's lost glory by using it to solve Bangladesh's plastic problem. I know the jute and I know how to cultivate it. Jute makes a good substitute because of its high concentration of cellulose, the structural component of plant cell walls that give them strength and rigidity. The state-run Lotif Bawani mill has been working with Mubarak since 2016 to make these plastic-like bags. Here, the jute comes from traders who buy it directly from farmers. First, raw jute fibers are shredded into 4 mm sized bits. Then, they're mixed with some secret chemicals to extract the cellulose for about 4 hours. The leftover pieces are bleached and dried in an oven until they look like this. Next, workers mix and modify the cellulose to make it water soluble and combine it with substances called binders and crosslinkers, molecules that bond it all together. To make the solution even more like plastic, workers load it into a heated reaction chamber for three hours. Like your pressure cooker in our house. Once the liquid cools, they blend it with a plant-derived polymer and natural food coloring. Mubarak says his concoction doesn't include any waste or petroleum products. But he wouldn't tell us every ingredient out of fear that someone might steal his invention. That is the most secret point of my recipe. The end result is poured directly into the film casting machine. Here, the composite rotates on a steel belt and is dried with hot air until it becomes a colorful film. Most of these machines had to be custom built. Workers cut the film sheets by hand and use sewing machines to stitch the material together. The final product consists of 70% jute. It's called the Sonali bag after the Bengali word for golden. Bangladesh could be the golden, earn the golden by selling these bags. The project is still operating on a pilot basis under his direction and is completely funded by the Ministry of Textiles in Jute. Today, Lotif Bawani has the capacity to make 15,000 Sonali bags per day, but it doesn't always run full scale. The number depends on how many orders are received. Corporate customers for the bag once included British American Tobacco, electronics dealer Rahim Afroz, and fashion brands like Sara Lifestyle. But the partnerships didn't last, since the Sonali bag project doesn't have the production capacity to meet even a fraction of what these companies needed. Finding the investment to scale up remains a challenge. We need money, we need the infrastructure, we need the management, and now we don't find any real business guy who's going to use this uh, technology. So how does it compare to a single-use plastic or polypropylene bag? When you put side by side, you cannot differentiate it. But only burn it, then you can see this produce the ash, and poly bag is produce the petrol. That's because plastic is made from oil and jute is biodegradable. So when it eventually decomposes, the stored carbon stays within the soil instead of being released back into the atmosphere. So far, only the government of Bangladesh has certified that the Sonali bag is biodegradable. But each one is designed to dissolve within three months in soil and eight hours in water. And it can hold roughly 35 pounds compared to a traditional plastic bag's 20 pound capacity. The main problem is Sonali bags cost about 10 times more than plastic ones and about five times more than other biodegradables like paper bags. But as Muberg scales up production, he expects the price to drop. These days, some stores, brands, and environmental groups buy Sonali bags on a small scale to test their durability. Like Sultan Mart in Chattogram, the country's second largest city. Owner Sharif Ahmed says his brother bought the bags for him directly from Bangladesh Jute Mills Corporation. He claims they don't tear as easily as plastic ones. 
প্লাস্টিক ব্যাগগুলো একটু খোঁচা লাগলে ছিঁড়ে যায় হ্যাঁ অনেক সময় দুইটা তিনটা পলে একসাথে করে মানে ওদেরকে প্রোডাক্ট কাস্টমারকে প্রোডাক্ট দিতে হয় Some customers can hardly tell them apart from traditional plastic bags. The meat quality is also very good. I, I, I like the fact that it's, it's made in a way that it can be decomposed very easily and recycled very easily. Mubarak understands the challenges behind shifting away from such a cheap, commonly used material like plastic. When you go for new product in the market, nobody accepts it. Because always they compare with the, uh, the existing products. And right now, Sonali bags just aren't as affordable. The government has been supportive of his initiative, but it hasn't been fully enforcing the bag ban. Two decades after it was enacted, the average city dweller consumes three times more plastic. Over the years, a series of natural disasters like cyclones and floods have diverted attention away from the cause, even though plastic waste makes the floods worse by blocking waterways. Political instability and corruption have also disrupted progress. Other countries have had some success with similar bans. Kenya enacted a ban on plastic bags in 2017, and now 80% of the public has stopped using them. In Rwanda, authorities go as far as confiscating plastic bags from luggage as people enter the country. Perpetrators are subject to steep fines or even jail time. Bangladesh has its penalties too a wide range of fines from about $450 to $9,000, or an imprisonment of one to 10 years, depending on how the judge rules. But here, businesses and individuals aren't regularly monitored for violations. Making a viable alternative is a huge step forward, but the country has a long way to go before Sonali bags are more common than plastic ones. After more than 20 years of working on this project, Mubarak still believes Jute can solve the plastic problem not only in Bangladesh, but everywhere else, too. This is our duty to produce the jute globally and show the variety and your beauty of the jute in all over the world.